In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass, we first take a moment to call to mind our sins on this nativity of St. John the Baptist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make a ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from, my, from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow and his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord." 
and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, for I am wonderfully made. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you have probed me, you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. My soul also knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you, when I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king. Of him God testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 You, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. I read him from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then would this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This feast day is always a reminder to me of my brother's ordination, which we celebrate this week. And of course, at his uh, first Mass, I got to preach, and I know that his ordination happened around the Nativity of John the Baptist. It was very, very important to him, especially 
that the Lord knit me in my mother's womb. And one of the beautiful stories in my family is that when my parents became pregnant with my brother, the doctors thought that my brother would have all kinds of illnesses and deformities and probably wouldn't live very long. In fact, my parents' doctors uh, recommended an abortion. And my parents went home, started to pray rosaries, and got a new doctor. <laughs> and I'm not going to say that my brother is without his things. He is my little brother for all intents and purposes. But it is true that the Lord truly knit my brother in my mother's womb and ordained him to be a priest. And how beautiful that is. And I think for each of us, you know, this Feast of John the Baptist is really a reminder of vocation. That all of us are together in our mother's womb, that all of us are knit together with a divine purpose. I think this is something that we have very much lost in our current age, in many ways because of the sin of abortion. Because you cannot hold in one sense that every baby has a purpose. Every baby knit together in his or her mother's womb has a divine purpose to fulfill and also be able to sleep at night with what goes on. And it is, my brothers and sisters, very important for us to recognize that God has an express divine will and call for each person. And the tragedy in our world these days of how many aren't being able to live the life that God has ordained for them. We see that John the Baptist's conception is very much miraculous. Of course, the parents of John the Baptist were very much old, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And Zechariah, why he was doing his temple service in the Holy of Holies. And realize in the Holy of Holies, they would actually tie a rope around you and bells around you just in case you were to see an angel and croak. They could pull you out. Your corpse, that is. Um, and Zechariah does see an angel. And he is, loses his ability to speak because of his incredulousness because he does not believe and trust God. He almost mocks and scoffs. And I think it's very, another very beautiful truth that Zechariah has made mute, that John the Baptist will not be able to hear his father's doubts and skepticism during the nine months that he is in his mother's womb. And again, this gospel portrays to us just how important that formation in the womb truly is. It's been shown over and over and over by psychology and by life experience. The wounds that can happen to a baby who is unwanted while in the womb. How it really does change a baby's character when the pregnancy is tumultuous. And this is why it's so important that we as a society really support young mothers and fathers. That they may also be the best of fathers for their children while they are being knit together in the womb. And that every baby knows from the moment of conception that they are wanted, that they are loved, that they will be cherished, and that the whole world is waiting to meet them. My brothers and sisters, this feast day is also a day to recall how John the Baptist is the greatest of all the prophets. He's the greatest of all the prophets because he had the distinct honor to point out who the Messiah is, who God is for us. And John the Baptist does this, but it wasn't like he got to fiddle away his life and then in one moment just point out Jesus on the street. No, his whole life revolved around this primary mission statement. This is what drove him out into the desert. This is what made him preach. This is what allowed him to be there for the repentance of his countrymen who had fallen to idolatry and skepticism about the prophecies. John the Baptist baptized with a baptism of repentance, not to blow his countrymen out of the water, not to judge, but to purify and enable them to receive the Messiah. It was an act of mercy, an act of charity. And in many ways, it was through that action that many were able to come to recognize the Christ. John the Baptist, in many ways, died a meaningless death. We know that Herod's daughter-in-law danced a dance and he promised anything to her and her mother who didn't like John the Baptist because John the Baptist says you two shouldn't be married it's unlawful had his head brought out on a platter and in many ways our readings today testify to that you know especially our first reading 
You know, though I thought I had told in vain and for nothing usefully spent my strength, yet my reward is my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. And in meditating on the life of John the Baptist, in so many ways he was denied the satisfaction that he was called to have. You know, his own disciples left him to follow Jesus. In fact, John the Baptist told them to follow Jesus and go with him. And then John the Baptist pretty much died in obscurity. He didn't get to see any of his followers until after he had been beheaded and then there wasn't much seen to be done. He died alone in a dark prison cell. And I think for each of us, it is a faith in God that allows us to confront these things. And it was John the Baptist who kept the faith because he truly knew God. Part of being a prophet is having that living relationship with him and knowing that purpose and not doubting that purpose for which we were knit together in our mother's womb. So my brothers and sisters, this feast day is a beautiful opportunity for us to just ground ourselves more and more on the purpose of our lives. And many people say, I I don't know the purpose of my life. One of my favorite things to tell couples right after they get married is, now you know why you're alive. Because marriage is that affirmation of the purpose of our life, as is priestly ordination. But so too, out of marriage and out of vocation comes ministry, comes our ability to love others and to be prophetic for the Lord. And I think for each of us, we could probably count on many hands, many things that the Lord has set out for us to do. But let us pray that we may truly have a sense of that divine purpose in our lives, that we may not become distracted, that we may not lose zeal, that we may not lose heart, but that we may continue on, as John the Baptist did to the bitter end, proclaiming the truth of Christ, proclaiming repentance, that all may come to know God, and truly looking to the Lord, because we know that our reward is truly in him. And as we come to this Mass, we profess that faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we come... Before our Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities. We also pray in a special way for our upcoming Priest Unity Days in our diocese. We pray for our greater unity and zeal for the priesthood as we get together that we may truly support one another and help one another to fulfill the purpose for which the Lord has knit us together in our mother's wombs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that as parishes and families, we may truly come to recognize the importance of raising our children in the faith, beginning with conception. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
And we pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray in a special way for those who die alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in a special way for Joan Welker, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful to you, that we may truly recognize the ways that you call us to live our faith and to live with the primary mission for which you have created us. Help us to be inspired by John the Baptist, that we too may recognize your coming daily in our lives and live for you as he did. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all, his holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed, it out, pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to O Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy. At the coming of human salvation, he alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption, and to make holy the flowing waters. He baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we to those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the verse, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the Heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth 
the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless you.